Hi, uh, I'm Adam Randall. I'm the Cobalt Blue uh, Broken Hill Cobalt Project Demonstration Plant Manager here in Broken Hill. Uh, and we've been um, mining a sample from our mine site and working to process that through our plant here to generate some uh, commercial samples of our cobalt product. Adam, good to see you again. I think last time I saw you was with um, Joe, um, pr probably not too far from when you're, where you're standing right now. Um, thanks for joining us. So we're we're on site with you, um, and you are, as you say, uh, moving things along um, through to um, production. So can you tell me, wh um, at the moment, what are you focused on? Obviously, you've got to get samples out of the mine. So are, are you mining properly yet? Well, yes, yeah, so it's been a very exciting period. We have actually opened a new mine for all intents and purposes. We opened a single underground drive. We've extracted several thousand tonnes of ore from our uh, pyrite hill, the primary ore body. And we've got that above ground going through crushing and processing to generate a pyrite concentrate feed for our demonstration plant here in Broken Hill. Right, and, and so, um, I mean, are you mining much? Is, is it just literally just kind of like, is it the first step forward or what can we expect to see from the mine going forward from you? So the mining operation was a, uh, a very precisely uh, specific uh, block of ore that was extracted for the purpose of the uh, providing a feedstock for the demonstration uh, plant. The future operations will instead be open cut at the bulk mining scale in the future. Right, and so, but it, you, you talked about this very specific sample. Um, to, to what end? What are, you, what are you trying to do in terms of just, is it just going to test the plant or is it actually be able to get stuff, um, you know, out to companies who want to test your product? Well, it's, yeah, no, exactly. So ultimately the, the aim is to generate uh, commercial grade and quantity samples of both our primary uh, cobalt product, which is the mixed hydroxide precipitate, MHP, uh, and also the final refined Product, which is the high-grade cobalt sulfate uh, to send around to the various battery producers. Right. And and in terms of you know, the, the volume that you're going to be producing, I mean, how, how many people are going to be able to actually test the product at some sort of reasonable scale to be able to help Joe, Joe and Joel advance those conversations? Yeah. So we've got a queue, I believe, of around about 30 people, 30 companies and groups around the world who are interested in taking these samples, which could be as much as 100 kilos or something, give or take. Uh, depending on their requirements per sample. Right, and, and there's the expectation that, that, you know, that's the kind of like, I mean, how does it work? Do you know, is that like a, like a first test and then they'll require a second batch? And I, I, it, I guess it's going to be difficult to talk about timing and all of this, but just a sense of the process would be useful for us. Yeah, well, that's right. So these will be generally the second sample for a lot of these groups. The first sample was was a smaller scale sample for their uh, for their laboratory testing. These samples are sized such that they can be integrated into manufacture of a battery. So they can actually be used to manufacture a battery uh, for, for testing and evaluation purposes. Right. Okay. So it, it, obviously the, the kind of mine component is it's like, like big, big baby steps on that one, just to be able to get these kind of bulk samples. Um, in terms of the plant um, itself, um, again, so certain, I'm just trying to understand the kind of the testing process because that's the important bit because you, these are these these will be significant steps when you kind of start whittling it down as to who you know you want to work with or who wants to work with you. Um, how how does the ref the refining to specific um, demands from those from those companies work in terms of the way that you set up the plant. I think it's a little bit almost the other way. We we produce the product that we produce. Uh, the 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 project is is uh, based around a, a, a quite a unique ore body, uh, which carries the cobalt in pyrite and is almost exclusive of other other metals. There are traces of nickel and uh, and, and and minor traces of, of copper. The Mining operation has been scaled to generate a sufficient size bulk sample that we can generate probably six to eight hundred tons of concentrate as a feedstock for our demonstration plant in Broken Hill. We will bring that material from our mine site into town and we'll put it through a small scale plant, which is a replica of the proposed full scale commercial operation that will be operated in, in years to come out at, uh, out at the mine site. Uh, the scale of the operation is, is, is sufficient to generate commercial scale samples for these offtake partners and, and interested groups. 
Right, and with the plant, the plant as it stands at the moment, obviously you're you're standing in. That is the plant you're standing in, right? That's the demo plant. This is this is a part of part of the plant. Yes. Yeah? So uh, immediately behind me are some uh, high pressure vessels uh, that we use to oxidise the iron and 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 ultimately get that ready to remove, so that we can ensure the purity of of the uh, the final cobalt product. Right, and, and is it is it kind of like a fairly modular affair? Is it can you build on what you've got, or do you have to build? Starting from scratch at scale. I mean, how, how does it work? Yeah, no, absolutely. This is this is a um, uh, this is this is one thousandth of the ultimate plant wow. design. Wow. So uh, where I'm I'm standing, things near things that are that are not as tall as I am. The the, the future vessels will be orders of magnitude greater. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, so. So that's that's. So what happens to that plant then? Is that does that continue on in some way, shape, or form? Yeah, that's right. So this this plant will eventually become uh, a test work, a research facility uh, that will enable us to take packages of ore from other potential projects and run them run that mineral from those other projects through this plant and through this process to understand the viability of application of this process to to other projects. Uh, to to further develop and realise uh, cobalt units in the future. Are, are you are you talking about the kind of the, the Queensland opportunities um, that Joe's talked about in the past, um, but potential work there? Well, wherever they may fall. So we've 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 got some MOUs in place with a number of companies, uh, other mining projects in Australia. We've also uh, made quite solid strides towards generation of um, cobalt from waste streams whether they're uh, existing mine tailing stands or, or other industrial waste streams. Right. Okay. In interesting. I, I guess we'll hear more about that, um, you know, as, as time goes on. Um, so just, just sticking with the, with, with the plant that you, so you, you've kind of described the, the, the process and again, you can't talk to me about uh, timing um, per se, but you've got everything that you need as far as you're concerned to be able to get these bulk samples out Um What's what's your what's your expectation of, of how this thing moves forward? From if that's a thousandth of what what this thing's going to be, are you sort of planning out where the where the where the main plant goes? I mean, do, are you having to put orders for long lead items in place? I mean, can you do that so you've got contracts? I mean, again, how does that side of things work? We're not quite at that stage, but but that's very strongly where, where we're heading to. Uh, in 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 overall terms, we've completed the mining on site. We've com completed crushing that ore, and 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 we've generated that feedstock for our plant out of site. Uh, we'll process that material outside, and we'll make concentrate. We bring the concentrate in here. So over the next three to six months, we'll we'll complete our operation here at the demonstration scale. One of the largest outcomes from that is not only the the samples that go around, but but also the collection of data, generation of data around the process itself which then feeds into the engineering and, and economic studies for the full-scale plant and project. Right, so, so you're, not, you're not talking like massive timelines here. I mean, the, the, the kind of the speed, because I think guess what shareholders are looking for is this kind of re-rate moment where you go from you know, you, having been sort of explorer and then you kind of have to work out technically in terms of what you're capable of doing and then prove it at lab scale and then prove it at demo plant scale. But the, the big moment for the company is this re-rate through to developer seller uh, of, of cobalt into the marketplace. So t time frames are, you've given us a bit of a clue there, is are we looking at next year for some sort of FID? Well, yes. So in, in, in the next year, we'll, we'll get through that FID. Thereafter, the timeline would indicate that by 2025, 26, we will be, uh, we'll have, have boots on the ground at our mine site and doing site establishment and, and initial phases of construction. Right. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And what about on the ground? Because we've seen um, talk to a lot of companies problems in South America, in even in North America, with regards to um, you know whether whether it be First Nations Indigenous issues over there, um, or even or, or locals, you know, anti mining rhetoric. So th this whole ESG narrative is has been very very important. It's now getting a little bit of stick. Um, from 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 some parts as as being a kind of false narrative. I mean, what, what's it what's it actually like for a company like yourself to moving into this phase where you know locals are going to start to see you know significant building works and um, you know and they'll have different views on that. I mean, how do you manage all of that? 
Well, there's a number of facets to that. And, and in fact, there's, that's an area that we're investing quite a lot of, of effort and resource. Um, our model is largely to recruit from within the local community. We're, our preference is to have a residential workforce. We're quite fortunate in that Broken Hill has such a long history oriented around mining as being the, the primary um, uh, industry in town. So obviously the local community can't provide all of those people that we need. So we plan to bring people to Broken Hill for these roles. Uh, we've currently got a workforce in around about 40 people uh, and we anticipate increasing that to something like 400 people over the next two or three years. Right. Okay. So that's, that's significant in terms of, of, of jobs, but in, in, but what about the kind of in, in the background? There are going to be groups who may not be as as happy with um, you know large construction um, in in the locale. I mean, are you seeing anything any pushback? No, it's it's been very positively received in the local community. Um, the large scale plant is twenty five kilometres out of town but it's close enough that it provides support for all of the local industries within town, engineering, steel fabrication, electrical, you know, uh, engineering supplies and, and, and so on and so forth. It's, uh, we've, we've garnered a very strong local support base, uh, you know, and, and the local community by and large is, is very positively disposed towards this project. Right. But, but how does that work? What do you actually do? What are you doing on the ground? So I'm, intri- so I'm, so I'm perhaps overly in- intrigued by this because we've seen a few, again, companies elsewhere in the world kind of get, get crushed or like stopped in their tracks. And you know, we were talking to a group of copper CEOs who've got 10 projects on hold because they're just not getting the licenses that they, they need because they've got the support that they need. So what, what, do you, what have you actually done? done how, how do you move this along or has it just been a case of this there's been no pushback so it's been an easy ride for you well, i think that the circumstances around this project are quite unique um this is very much the right project at the right time and in the right place broken hill has a long history and a long dependence on mining uh the local community by and large everybody has either worked in or is related to somebody who's worked in the mines the on the on the more macro scale, the New South Wales government is is very strongly disposed to to developing of this. We've received um, uh, critical uh, major project status from the federal government. We've we've had recognition from the uh, uh, Critical Minerals Accelerator Initiative, which is another federal government uh, program. Overall, the Australian government is very supportive of this. The local government is very supportive of, of development of this scale of project in this community, this will generate, you know, 50 or 60 million bucks per annum of, of, of uh, salaries in the local community. So this is a massive boon for an outback city like Broken Hill. Uh, and and the uh, the local community, the local industry and the local service providers are all, uh, all very much looking forward to seeing this project come through to fruition. Okay. Okay. Well, look, um, Adam, just one more question. I want to go back to the, um, if I can, the, the plant. Obviously, you've got groups looking to receive these these kind of bulk samples, right? So, so they can learn a little bit more about your products and if it works for them. Have you come across any issues? Were there any sort of uh, um, unexpected consequences of you going through this process? I mean, have you had to adapt or change anything? Not from a project perspective. I mean, some of the uh, the difficulties that we've experienced uh, previously at the pilot scale are a function of the scale of that plant. Trying to find the correct equipment at, at a very small scale is, is quite often a challenge. Uh, but all of the fundamentals of, are, are in place. The, the ore is amenable to being processed. Uh, we've got a very low cost upfront uh, process to generate the concentrate or the feedstock for this plant. The, each one of the unit operations in this plant is, is conventional uh, and proven processing technology. And each of those unit or modules of, of process have been cobbled together in a, in a unique and bespoke way for this project. Uh, and it's, it's so far so good. You know, the pilot plant was a, was a, a, a very successful operation. We generated some very high quality samples, at, albeit at smaller scale which has then generated this appetite and enthusiasm for us to generate these larger scale 
samples from the current demonstration scale operations. Right, and, and does that kind of feed, so basically do, do any of those issues then feed into the design for the, for the larger plant or is it just a case of, well, like, as, as you described, maybe it's a case of actually doing it at a smaller scale can sometimes be more difficult than doing it at a larger scale? Oh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to suggest that there won't be challenges, technical challenges along the way. As we get bigger, those challenges will change. Um, but, uh, but all things are very positive at the moment for us having a successful outcome at this demonstration scale, which all bodes well for the future commercial scale operation. Right. Okay. And then, and then finally, one more, but back on, back on the mine side of things. Um, you said that you kind of had selected an area for this bulk sample in terms of mining that ore and processing it through the through the plant to be able to provide those bulk samples. It was was that a case of um, going for the best bit or was it the, like high grading as it were, or was that representative of what you expect to see coming out of the mine in terms of that the the consistency of that ore? The, uh, the, the the section of the ore body that we tapped into is 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 reasonably representative of the of the the wider and the, the rest of the ore body. One of the big advantages with the location we chose is that it, it started within uh, you know a handful of meters from surface. So rather than having to, to dig a you know, drive a massive decline too far underground, we were able to intersect the um, the ore body within thirty or forty meters of surface on a, on a, at a five degree incline. You know, um, <clears throat> the the decline was only hundred meters long. It was a very very short underground development, which which obviously returned. Uh, we provide a good return on investment. I didn't have to spend too much money doing it. Good. We like that. Well, that's right. <laughs> we yeah. like that. Um, look, Adam, uh, thanks for the update and um, thanks for actually sort of showing us around or having it. Well, we've got a sense of what's going on there in the, in the, in the background. Um, good luck with um, things as they go forward. Um, we look, we, I, mean, I think you've got uh, shareholders eagerly saying what's when uh well eagerly waiting for the results of these bulk testings to come come back from these various groups and and work out who you're going to be working uh with and i, I guess that's the moment where the company can actually work out how they get this thing financed as well so appreciate your time today thanks adam yeah no problem it's my pleasure anytime always happy to have a chat hey joe how are you well, thanks, Matthew. Good to talk again. Well, look, we thought we'd take advantage. We've just been speaking with Adam, actually, and um, you're up at site, so we thought we'd take advantage of that. Um, so things seem to be going quite well uh, with regards to the, the mine. You're now mining, wow, um, and the plant in terms of producing um, large-scale um, bulk samples for the groups that you're, you're looking at. So um, as far as you're concerned, what does that process allow you to do in terms of these large bulk samples that you're now sending out? Well, it's just a fantastic, as you heard from Adam, the most important thing is we've, you know, developed along this journey, or perhaps evolved is a better word. Now we're actually mining and now processing the ore from that site. And what that does is a couple of things for our commercial partners or our potential commercial partners. It, it proves um, that we're, you know, have the ability to uh, upscale from where we were from the, from the pilot plant last year, um, and that, that we can actually make these large bulk samples. And I know that Adam discussed the importance of having a much larger sample of actually putting into the battery process. Uh, but again, most importantly, coupled with all the recognition we're getting from the government, um, those outside commercial partners, when I say outside, I mean international ones, it's really important that A, you have the um, backing of the government, and B, you've got a process that works. So um, in, in terms of, of the commercial negotiations for potential offtake and, and partners, it's going really well. It's, it's kind of interesting. You talk about that journey. Um, you know, most companies struggle to find or make a discovery uh, in terms of that exploration phase. Then, then you've kind of got to ramp up through a kind of, dis um, a, a kind of development phase as well, which I guess you, you would classify yourself as advanced development with a demo, demo plant. But shareholders are looking to this re-rate moment that most companies get when you get into production. So it doesn't feel like that's very far away now. Well, that's right. And we're um, um, very advanced through our DFS um, uh, pro uh, process. So that will uh, be finished around this time next year. So we've got three um, big name engineers helping us uh, through that process. Um, you know, everything from all the permitting and a lot of the stuff that Adam described earlier in terms of gathering the data and how and, and measuring the performance of the uh, of the mine site, uh, crushing, uh, concentrate, and of course uh, here in the plant, um, all of those all of those processes. So 
Um, you know, it's just an invaluable time for us in terms of growing as a company. Uh, but obviously, the market's watching us very closely to see uh, the progress of that. Um, and then once we release the DFS, that obviously gives um, everyone more assurance of of what we'll eventually become, which is, um, as you know, uh, one of the only cobalt refineries outside of China. Yeah, which which uh, I don't think can be understated, actually. So in terms of the, obviously, you're getting bulk, sa- bulk sample process is, is happening, but timing Timing is everything. You know, you, you can be, you can be lucky with that. You can be unlucky with that. As far as you're concerned. So you're looking to get into production when 25? Is that right? Late 25, 26 would really be the, the right. big year. Right. Okay. And in terms of the market, then what, what are you seeing out there at the moment? Is this, this, are the conversations? Um, well, how keen are they? Because you talk about being one of the only ex-China um, producers. Where, does that put you in the driving seat or is it still a buyer's market? Well, th- there's a couple of things there in, in that important question. So thank you for that. Um, well, first of all, when we meet with particularly battery producers who've got a mandate, um, you know, procurement guys who've got a mandate looking over the next five or 10 years, they're looking down the line and they, they can see the tightness of the market, not only of the cobalt market itself, but of the of the uh, of, of a premium cobalt product, as we've talked about before, which is um, not from uh, DRC and, and potentially skipping the uh, the China route. And the other important development is what we've seen over the past couple of weeks in the U.S. with the Inflation uh, Inflation Reduction um, Act, uh, which is, um, I'm sure most of your viewers will be familiar with the details, but what for what's important for us is those um, incentives that the Act is uh, providing for not only American uh, producers, but any producer of a car that's being sold in the U.S. to ensure that a certain degree um, or percentage of the inputs come from a uh, free trade agreement or FDA friendly country, which, of course, Australia is. That put, uh, to go back to your original question, it does put us in the driver's seat. Um, it, it incentivizes um, U.S. or any producer of a car being sold in the U.S. to source material like ours and those of our direct peers uh, here in Australia, Canada, and the other FTA-friendly uh, countries. 